about half a million people in Singapore suffer from kidney disease, the country ranking fourth in the world for kidney failure rates despite a small population. Now, to tell us more, we have adjunct assistant professor Yeo Si Cheng, head of Department of Renal Medicine at Tan Tok Seng Hospital. Professor Yeo, welcome to the program. Good evening. Thank you for having me. So, Singaporeans, you know, are generally an active lot, right? We are very conscious of our intake of salt and sugar. So, why is it that we have become part of this very unfortunate statistic? We are ranked fourth in the world for prevalence of kidney failure. Yes, right around the world, the rising burden of kidney disease has been increasingly recognised, especially in Singapore. Mm. I think there are a few reasons for this. One is, of course, our ageing population. We know that as we get older, our kidney function naturally declines at a very slow rate. Mm. But also as we get older, there is an increased chance of us having chronic illnesses such as diabetes and high blood pressure. And those are important risk factors for kidney disease. Another important reason is, of course, our affluent lifestyle. As the society gets more and more affluent over the years, our dietary habits and also our exercise pattern might have changed. Um, absolutely, increasingly, people are more active and also more conscious of the sugar and salt intake. Mm. But very often, the salt and the sodium intake in our diets are hidden. For example, in the sauces, in the seasoning and gravy. And in Singapore, uh, every Singaporean takes more than double the WHO recommendation amounts of sodium, and that's an alarming trend. We really do love our sources, uh, don't we? Uh, what exactly is kidney failure, Professor Yeo? What are some of the misconceptions about it that you wish to debunk? Kidney failure is, re represents the most advanced stage, the most serious stage of kidney disease. Mm. But actually, kidney disease encompasses the entire spectrum across five different stages. In fact, many patients with stage 1 and stage 2 chronic kidney disease do not have any symptoms. Only when their kidney function declines and progresses, when they reach more advanced stages, then that's when they develop symptoms. And kidney failure happens when patients with kidney disease have such decreased level of kidney function, such as their body is not able to cope with that decreased function. Are there certain segments of uh, the Singapore society that are more prone to kidney failure than others? Yes, we, know, we now know that there are certain risk factors that predisposes one to kidney disease and of course kidney failure. Mm -hmm. Patients living with diabetes, uh, also individuals living with high blood pressure and people who are with, uh, overweight or obese are more prone to kidney disease. Of course, there are other risk factors, for example, family history of uh, kidney disease is also does increase the likelihood of kidney disease. We understand, so you were saying earlier that lifestyle choices like high blood pressure, diabetes, they can contribute. Uh, other factors can also damage your kidneys. So to what extent does gender and family history of kidney disease play a part too? When we look at the statistics, we recognise that male patients are more likely to develop kidney failure compared to females. But in that regard, it is also important to understand that some of the risk factors that predisposes one to kidney disease, mm. for example, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, or smoking, are more common and more prevalent in males, and therefore explain some of the reason why kidney disease and kidney failure is more common in the male population. Family why is that so? Um, of course, I think there are various factors but including uh, biological factors that right. predisposes males to, for example, high blood pressure. Mm. But there are also lifestyle factors, for example, smoking is yeah. more prevalent in the male population than mm. compared to the female counterparts. Okay, so today is World Kidney Day, Professor Yeo. I see that you brought along with you a model. Uh, what do people need to know about caring better for their kidneys? Yes, I think the kidney is an important organ that is not well understood by many in the uh, population. Mm. Uh, it does a wide range of functions. It gets rid of toxins from the body, it removes excess water, and it can also uh, help to produce red blood cells, uh, produce hormones that help in the production of the red blood cells. Mm. And all these are important because when the kidney function declines, it can cause a myriad of uh, problems and complications in the patients. But more importantly, it's important for patients and our people to recognise that early kidney disease may be asymptomatic, but if they are at risk of kidney disease, they really should speak to their doctors, the GPs or polyclinic doctors, to help to screen to see if they are at risk of kidney disease. 
Importantly, patients with early kidney disease represents an opportunity for them to do changes to their lifestyle or also to take treatment that can help prevent kidney failure. What are some of the first signs of kidney failure then that we should look out for then? Very often, patients with kidney disease are asymptomatic. Okay. So patients with risk factors such as diabetes, uh -huh. high blood pressure, obesity, or family history should really speak to their doctors to identify kidney disease through a simple blood and urine test. Of course, patients with more advanced kidney disease may develop symptoms. Some of these may include tiredness and lethargy, mm -hmm. fluid retention causing breathlessness or leg swelling, and um, skin itch. Some of these are some of the common symptoms of advanced kidney disease. But I think it's very important not to be assured just because of the lack of symptoms if you are at risk of kidney disease. Such an opportune time to talk about this. Today is World Kidney Day. Thank you so much, Professor Yeo, for coming in tonight. Uh, that was Adjunct Assistant Professor Yeo Si Cheng, Head of Department of Renal Medicine at Tan Tok Seng Hospital.